This is the voice of the scarab, Wilson. I command you to drive your tower over the cliff. The scarab is speaking to you, Evans. You have reached the end. You will walk to the window and step out. Into eternity. well-known attorney is another link in the chain of mysterious crimes known as the Purple Death Murders. In each case, a subtle unknown poison has been found in the bloodstream of the dead man, and each victim clutched in his hand a jeweled scarab. The scarab, ironically, was the symbol of eternal life among the ancients. It is significant that all of the murdered men were actively or financially connected with the recent scientific expedition into the ancient Mayan ruins of Central America. The authorities are completely baffled, and the mayor has called District Attorney Grant Gardner to appear before a meeting in the office of Police Commissioner Dryden. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and how are you, Commissioner? Hello, Grant. The Commissioner's been alibying his failure to turn up anything in these Purple Death murders. What are your excuses, Mr. Gardner? I don't make excuses, but I do have a definite plan. And that is? I'd rather not discuss it now. You'll have to be patient. You remember the Commissioner and I have cleaned up crime waves in this town before. Yes, but that mysterious Captain America did most of your work for you. We could only contact him now. I feel certain that this new crime wave will bring him out of hiding to help us. Mm. And I hope so. We're up against a new type of scientific criminal. One that we'll never find in the usual haunts of crime. I tell you, Dr. Maldo, there's a curse on everyone connected with that Mayan expedition. Jackson's gone, and Wilson, and Evans. Why, well, you or I may be the next victim of the Scarab's purple death. My dear Professor Lyman, you're overexcited. Calm yourself. Here, have a cigar. Thank you. Sit down, Professor, sit down. If there is an ancient curse upon us, this scarab who invokes it must be peculiarly mercenary. These men you have named are known to have withdrawn large sums of money from their banks just prior to their deaths. That's true. But I'm not wealthy. Ah, but the scarab wants other things. Rare jewels, paintings, antiques. He also wants scientific secrets such as you possess. Just what do you mean? The Scarab wants the plans of the thermodynamic vibration engine which you have invented. How did you find out about my vibrator? The Scarab has his own methods of obtaining information. You, the Scarab? Yes. I'm the Scarab. It is my vengeance which is striking at all of you. It was my expedition. I uncovered the secret information and laid the plans which made it successful. And how was I rewarded? I was made the curator of an insignificant museum. While the rest of you received the fame and wealth that should have come to me. You can't touch that phone. Sit down. For the short time you have to live, your mind is completely under my control. You must obey my command. You are a slave of the Purple Death. Purple Death? But how? The fumes from this cigar. I want to know more about the vibrator. It is a device for harnessing light and sound waves into a powerful force 
which will disintegrate any known material. That could be used by me as a powerful weapon of destruction. Yes. Splendid. Where are the plans? At home. In the safe. Write down the combination. Take Professor Lyman out. He will obey your final instructions. Yes. Step this way, Professor. Farewell, Lyman. We'll find the plans in Lyman's safe. Here's the combination. Take these purple death bombs with you. They'll be silent and effective weapons if anyone interferes. Yes, sir. This is what we're after. Just a minute. Throw your gun in a corner. You too. Dryden speaking. This is Captain America. What's that? Where are you? Never mind that. Professor Lyman's life is in danger. Professor Lyman is dead. He stepped off a curb in front of a truck. Another purple death accident. Well, at least I've accounted for one of the gang. You'll find his body at Professor Lyman's house. That's all. Get me the district attorney's office. Office of the District Attorney, Gail Richards speaking. Let me speak to the DA. Mr. Gardner isn't here now, Commissioner, but I expect to hear from him shortly. Well, tell him that Captain America's on the job. He just killed one of the Purple Death murderers. I'll tell him. I'm calling Captain America. Come in, Gail. Commissioner Dryden just told me the news. Do you need any help? I will as soon as I get back to the office. Have Davis there. I have an important clue for him to analyze. Right. He'll be here. This stuff is distilled from the cypridium, a little known orchid. Highly concentrated, its fumes form a deadly poison which leave those purple splotches on the victim's face. Careful, don't drop it. Is it that dangerous? It surely is. One whip is enough. Do florists have this cypridium plant? A few might. It's very rare. Fine. We'll trick the guilty one into showing his hand. Gail? You and I will visit the dealers in rare flowers in the morning. I'm Gail Richards from the district attorney's office. Yes, Miss Richards. We're trying to identify the plant from which this liquid was extracted. It may help in a criminal investigation. Sorry. 
I can't identify it. Thank you. No, I... I don't recognize it. Thank you very much. May I help you, miss? I'm from the district attorney's office. I have a plan extract which we're trying to identify with a murder investigation. I'm sorry, miss. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you. Oh, oh, no! I see you do know what the Purple Death Bomb is. You fooled me, all right, but it isn't going to do you any good. Get in there. Don't talk. Move. This dame's wise to our setup. Turn around here. Tie her up. office just came in. She had one of our purple death bombs and tricked me into showing my hand. What'll I do with her? You have plenty of the extract? Use it. of Grant Gardner, the district attorney, has exposed the source of the purple death poison. The cypridium orchid from which it was derived will be destroyed wherever found. Mr. Gardner is conducting a searching investigation into the affairs and acquaintances of Professor Lyman, latest victim of the poison. I've just come from the district attorney's office. He's questioning all the survivors of the main expedition. He doesn't suspect us. No. But we have something else to worry about. We are not the only ones who know the secret of Lyman's dynamic vibrator. Is there another set of plans? No. Worse than that. There's a working model which Lyman and his assistant Gregory constructed at Professor Dodge's laboratory. The district attorney is taking some technicians there tonight to see a demonstration and learn all about it. But if they learn how it works, then my secret weapon will no longer be a secret and someone will ultimately devise another machine to counteract it. Therefore, the model and Gregory must be destroyed tonight. That won't be difficult. The directions with these plans show how to step up the power of the machine so high that it'll destroy itself, along with the building and everyone in it. But suppose Captain America is on the job again? We know that Captain America gets information through the office of the district attorney. All I need do is to give the district attorney a tip about the scarab that will send Captain America off on a false scent. And that I have arranged to do tonight. This is Eddie, Mr. Gardner. I've got a hot tip on those Purple Death killings. 
Can you come over? I'm afraid to leave here. Where are you? A 204 in the arcade rooming house. All right. I'll be right over. What's he got? A tip on the scarab. I'll have to see him. I don't like it, Grant. It might be a trap. Don't worry. I'll be careful. I'll phone Gregory that you're bringing the technical men. Go ahead with the demonstration, and I'll be there as soon as I've seen Eddie. Well, your phone call worked, all right. Here comes Captain America. But I phoned the DA. That's right. And Captain America shows up as we expected. Well, you served your purpose, Eddie. Come in. Come on in. I don't know his name. Stop that. There are two bullets left. Yes. I'll hit one presently. Wait, wait. I'll talk. His name is Maxim. Keep talking. He wanted to get you out of the way. They're, they're pulling a big job at the office of a guy named Dodge. I don't know what it's all about. Well, I do. Good evening, Miss Richards. Mr. Merritt and Mr. Norton are here to witness your demonstration of the vibrator. Oh, yes, the DA telephoned me. I'm glad you came. I alone know the secret of this machine, and it's a heavy responsibility. So, uh, come this way, please. First, I'll show you how the machine works, and then I'll explain its construction. In a few minutes, we'll have generated sufficient power to destroy this miniature structure. Now, if you'll uh, step this way, you will see the result of the demonstration. were stolen from Professor Lyman, they contained instructions for stepping up the machine's power to 100 million volts. A force that would shatter a 20-story building like an eggshell. Gregory is right, gentlemen. We have directions here and we'll give you a demonstration of what this machine can do to this building. Now the first one who starts anything gets it. Set the control panel. You can't get away with this. Now get into the other room, all of you. Before we wreck this building, I want all of Professor Dodge's papers. Open that vault. I said open that vault. Get him.
Get in the vault, all of you. This is murder. That's right. Wholesale murder. All set. Start it up. I'll get the car ready for our getaway. Now don't leave until you're sure the machine is running okay. Right. If that machine builds up to its full power, this building will collapse in a cloud of dust. Captain America. What's happening in there? Get over there.
Hold it. Captain America. Captain America. the combination? Yes. Set point at zero. Left to 17. Right to 61. The vibrator. If it doesn't shut off, the building will collapse. Get out. I'll try to stop it. buildings destroyed. Many lives would have been lost if Captain America hadn't appeared. I'm not trying to discount Captain America's help, Mr. Mayor. I was merely pointing out that the danger is all over now. The stolen plans of the vibrator were destroyed along with the only two criminals who knew how to operate it. The scarab is completely disarmed. I'm afraid that's not entirely correct, Commissioner. You know that Matson got away with most of Professor Dodge's papers and plans. What were the plans? The most important one was for Dodge's portable electronic firebolt, a machine that generates an electrical charge powerful enough to cut through steel and concrete like a bolt of lightning. Why, with that weapon, they could blast open any vault in the city. But they don't have the weapon, merely the plans, and in code that'll baffle even the mysterious scarab. <laughs> ah. We're getting nowhere. Professor Dodge is clever. The plans are impossible to decode. Ah. We've got to decode. With the electronic firebolt, all the wealth and art treasures of the world will be mine. Well, since we can't break the code, I shall have to persuade Professor Dodge to do it for us. But Dodge is under police protection. The authorities are the only ones who know where he is. They won't stop me. I'll get that information from the DA's most trusted assistant, Miss Gail Richards. I was introduced by the district attorney. Remember? Of course, you're Dr. Maldor. What's the matter, Miss Richards? Your ring. It's sharp. It scratched me. For a purpose, Miss Richards. You are under a powerful hypnotic influence that forces you to obey me. I will obey. Where are they keeping Professor Dodge? In the district attorney's apartment, suite 304, Winston Arms. Is the district attorney with him? No, but he's going there soon. How is he guarded? There's a policeman in the apartment with him. Now listen carefully. You will go up to your office and telephone the man who is guarding Professor Dodge and tell him that two detectives from the district attorney's office are coming over to question him. You must hurry as the effect of the serum will be working off in a few minutes. When it does, you will remember nothing that has happened. Do you understand? I understand. Good. Then go, quickly. Answer 
Professor Dodge. Hello, Clancy speaking. Hello, Clancy. This is Gail. Two of the DA's men are coming over to question Professor Dodge. All right, Miss Richards. I'll let them in. Thanks, Clancy. Hello, Gail. Say, what's the matter? I don't know. I feel dizzy. What you need is fresh air. I suppose you drive over with me to see Professor Dodge. I won't be long. Clancy, how's everything? You're covering, Mr. District Attorney. This is curtains for you. They hang men in this state for murder. This won't be murder. You're going to commit suicide with your own gun. You just couldn't stand the disgrace of your constant failures. And the kidnapping of Professor Dodge was the last straw. Oak Ridge, 631. Get there with Dodge. Tell him everything's okay. I just took care of the DA. You think you did? The first cartridge in my gun is always a blank to be fired as a warning shot. Turn around. Attorney, please get the telephone supervisor and find out the address of Oak Ridge, 631. Call me back here. and feed barn, Glenmore Road. Thanks. Matson has taken Professor Dodge. I'm going after him. Clancy's up in my apartment out cold. You phone the commissioner, tell him what happened, and then take care of Clancy. Right. mind and tell us the code key to these plans. No. Start the tractor. Okay.
Start talking. I'll have to show you in writing. All right. But no tricks. Go ahead. All the specifications are in letters instead of numbers. Code is based on the ten-letter word Davenport's.
What happened before I arrived, Professor Dodge? They forced me to reveal the code key to the plans for my electronic firebolt. With that machine, they can break into any safe or vault in the country. Now, well, that's probably just what they plan to do. Some mysterious device which burns through steel and concrete, thieves last night broke into the Hammond Art Galleries. Many of the world's most priceless paintings, old masters, irreplaceable originals were removed. The daring safe breakers are still at work. Their latest objective was the home of Jacob Mortimer, the famed collector. Rare manuscripts and first editions of inestimable value have disappeared. Insurance losses to date have already exceeded a million dollars. Public demand for action is mounting, and law enforcement agencies seem unable to cope with the strange menace. I'm getting enough criticism from the mayor without listening to any more of that. Pretty bad. That electronic firebolt is a powerful weapon in the hands of criminals, but I think we can stop them now. You mean if that machine of Professor Dodge's really locates the firebolt? You can depend on Professor Dodge. His locating device will be finished today. And the next time they use that firebolt, We'll have a chance to trap the Scarabs gang. At this rate, you'll soon have every art treasure and antique of the city. Don't be too confident. The district attorney is no fool, and Professor Dodge is a very competent scientist. <laughs> they haven't stopped us yet. No. But I must learn what their plans are. You're going at once to find out what's happening at the district attorney's apartment in the Winston Arms. except the installation of the fire trolling tubes, which must be fitted by the skilled technicians of the Munson Laboratories. And as a precaution, Mr. Gardner wanted to take the control unit to the laboratories himself. I'll tell him it's ready. Get me the district attorney. District attorney. This is Professor Dodge, Mr. Gardner. Control unit for the firebolt locator is ready for the lab work. Excellent. I'll be there in an hour to pick it up. Looks interesting, Professor. Are you sure it'll work? Positive, Mr. Gardner. With the fire drone tubes installed, we can locate the electronic firebolt wherever it is used. I'll take this to the laboratories, get the tubes installed, and be back here before dark. Clancy, you better stand guard out in the hall. Yes, sir. Grant's car. I've got to warn him. H.I. M.A. calling H.I. Come in, M.A. The job's finished. The stuff will make his motor heat up. And as soon as it hits the boiling point, the car will explode like a bomb. Here he comes.
Highway Patrol, District Attorney speaking. I'm traveling north on Route 50. License 8K5047. Notify all police in vicinity to stop and detain occupant of station wagon trailing me. District Attorney, license number 8K5047. Traveling north, trailed by station wagon. Got it. I'm trying to overtake the DA. Someone's tampered with his car. I'll phone headquarters to flash him a radio warning. That's right, the district attorney's car. calling District Attorney Gardner, urgent. Come in, please. Connie speaking. What's wrong? Examine your car for trouble. It's been tampered with. Thanks, I'll check it. So is the control unit for Professor Dodge's locating device. The scarab won't know that. I'll prepare a headline that'll convince him it's still safe to use the firebolt. Let's go. Mystery car explosion injures DA. Scientist locating device unit destroyed. Mm. <laughs> so, we were successful. Now we can proceed with our attack on the National Platinum Company's refinery vault without interference of the district attorney. We know the thieves will use the stolen fireboat again. And when they do, its electronic radiations will illuminate this bulb. Then I'll run the pointer along the contact points. When I make a contact on the area where the fireboat is working, that light will start flashing. Look, the electronic fireboat is being used somewhere. Now's our chance to locate it. Gardner's a brave man. I'd feel much happier if Captain America were with him.
serious. Since Dart perfected his locator, it would have been dangerous to use it again. But we must recover that truck at any cost. It would take months to duplicate its robot control and television unit. Let's see where they've taken it. Turn on the television controls. Keep your eye on it day and night. Government Museum, Dr. Maldor speaking. This is Grant Gardner, Doctor. Sorry to call you so late, but something important has just come up. Yes? I just received a phone call from the attorney of the late Professor Lyman. He's reading the will in the morning. Since you and Professor Dodge are beneficiaries, he wants you both to be there. I'll be glad to attend. What time is the meeting? 10 o'clock in the morning at the Lyman residence. And the balance of my estate to be dispersed as follows. To Professor Dodd, my lifelong friend, I have bequeathed my home and all its contents. To Dr. Malner, for his loyalty and untiring efforts in the cause of science, I give all my rights and interests in the Drummond Museum, with the exception of the Mayan crown jewels now in his custody. The jewels will be turned over to Professor Dodd 
and sold to finance an expedition into the Mayan jungle to search for the lost city of Zada. That is all, gentlemen. Now that you've inherited this estate, Professor, do you propose to live here? I hope so. If you think it's safe, I'll make it safe. I'll keep police guards around here as long as there's any sign of danger from the scarab. Thank you. What progress are you making in the scarab case? Not much. But Captain America has turned a truck over to us that may hold a clue. The mechanic is checking it now. You should be able to give me a report on it by the time I get there. Now, if you'll excuse me. Well, <laughs> I must be getting back to the museum. I'll deliver the Mayan jewels to you tomorrow. Very well, I'd expect you. Goodbye. What happened? Oh, they treated me as they always have. Lyman willed me his interest in the museum, which I already control. His only possession of any real value, the Mayan jewels, must be handed over to Professor Dodge tomorrow. Of course, you intend to give them to him? Oh, certainly, certainly. That is, if Professor Dodge is still alive. Is he still staying at the DA's apartment? No, he's at the Lyman house with a strong police guard. It would be easy if he only had a robot controlled truck. Exactly. Come in quick. They're checking the truck. What do you make of it? Well, there are some details that I can't figure out, but it's robot control. Uh, with a device something like the automatic pilots used in planes, it can be driven without anyone at the wheel. How is it steered through traffic? I can't tell exactly, but a controlling device would have to be nearby, perhaps in the car following. I didn't find a television unit concealed in the roof. Thanks very much. If it's robot controlled, why haven't they driven it away from here? Two motorcycle officers would have followed it. I'll fix that. Then they can take it whenever they want. And when they do, I'll be inside. All right, boys. I'll take over now. Gonna stand by the office just in case I need you. The second that door closes on Mr. Gardner, be ready to take control of the truck. All set. Good. Take it away. H1 calling B10. H1 calling B10. B10, come in. The robot truck is on the way to you. Be ready for it. We're set. Get set for the district attorney, too. He's in the middle compartment. The scarab wants him alive. Alive, get it? Right. Come out, Mr. DA. We've been expecting you. I see. The reception committee, huh? We're just the doorman. The committee will take care of you later. Tie him up. B-10, calling H-1. Go ahead, B-10. Everything's okay? Yes, I know. We're watching you. Now put a load of explosives in the truck. We're going to crash it into Lyman's house and finish off Professor Dodge. What'll I do with the DA? Keep him there. The scarab will attend to him personally. Right. We'll put enough explosives in to blow Dodge and the house clear off the map. Now it's a 
the travel and bond. Open the doors. Start it up. Professor Dodd is going to have an unexpected visitor.
from America. Give me that wheel. decided to go to South America with the Fletcher expedition. We're leaving tomorrow on the Hermosa. I can't stand being under the constant threat of death from the scarab. Yes, I know. I, I read the papers. You've been through a terrible ordeal. Is there anything I can do? Yes. My ship sails at four in the afternoon. Could you bring me the main crown jewels in time for me to turn them over to my dealer? Certainly. Uh, I'll be there in good time. Is there anything else? No, thank you. The district attorney is attending to all the arrangements. He's keeping a police guard here until I leave and furnishing an escort to the pier. Fine. I'll see you tomorrow. Hmm. It should be simple to work with them now. Matson. This is an assignment for Agent M32. Have him make a reservation on the Hermosa. He struck the steamship line to call for his truck at his rooming house. Come in, Doctor. Thank you. Jewels, you'll find the collection intact. Of course. Beautiful, aren't they? Precious stones that women love and men die for. True enough. Would you sign this receipt, please? I hope your trip will make you forget the horrible experiences you've had. I'm sure it will. Perhaps by the time you return, the district attorney will have caught the scarab. I'll keep trying. Hello? Have them drive in. I'll check their credentials at the house. It's the expressman for your baggage. Well, bon voyage. Thank you, Doctor.
Professor Dodge has been murdered. Murdered? Pull that baggage truck till we check out. Too late. Just pull it out and headed north. Have your men search every inch of the house and grounds. I'm going after that truck. Search the ground. Take a look inside this truck. How'd that trunk get opened? I don't know. It was closed when we put Mr. Dodge's baggage in. Dodge has been murdered. And the man who did it hid in that trunk and then got out somewhere along this road. Who shipped it? There you are. John Taylor. 721 West Avenue. But he checked out and was just leaving when we made the pickup. Naturally, he would. You finish your route, then bring that trunk to my office. It'll be checked for fingerprints. Did they have any luck, Chief? Yes. Get me the police commissioner immediately. The fingerprints on the trunk identified Taylor as Lefty Harper, a criminal with a long police record. I'm going to start a search for him. Hello? Oh, hello, Commissioner. I want a dragnet thrown out for Lefty Harper, alias John Taylor. He was found dead in his car half an hour ago, shot through the head. Where's the body? At the morgue. The car is downstairs, back at police headquarters. We looked it over. The place and registration slip are phony. But we did find a service station sticker, which might be a lead. Good. What's the address? Allen's Gas Station, 5th and Manchester. Gail well, can check that for us. I'll meet you at the morgue. Yeah, I serviced that car and delivered it around the corner to the fiber box company. Thank you, I'll go there. Taylor worked here a week or two and then quit. That's all I can tell you. I see. May I use your telephone? Sure. Hello? Yes, Gail. Where are you? Fiber Box Company. Taylor was a transit worker here, but he left. They don't know anything more about him. That's what they say. We're dealing with clever criminals. Now, let's try something like... Let me jot that address down. I'll go right over. Thank you. Well, Miss Richards. Lewis. What's she doing here? She was asking about Taylor. I told her we didn't know anything. This is the girl who works with Captain America. She's going to tell us who Captain America really is. Aren't you, Miss Richards? No. You can change your mind. Show her how that paper cutter works.
their support. Got more nerve than I figured. I better phone the boss and put it up to him. Lois, who used this phone last? The girl. She left the connection open so they could hear us. We've got to get her away fast. Hold it! Captain America. Open so they could hear us. We've got to get her away fast. Halt! Captain America. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Either the district attorney and Captain America are one and the same man, or else they're working very closely together. The girl called the DA's office and left the phone open so they could listen to us. Then Captain America arrived. Well, we will fire over our Captain America in due time. Now we must get ready for the next move. The next move? He is against Henley, the petroleum magnate. He also was a member of the Mayan expedition which discredited me. I've sent him an extortion note, which he's sure to take to the district attorney. And we must learn what the DA intends to do about it. So you're to install a radio dictaphone in the district attorney's apartment. In his apartment? If he should find me there... Ah, but he won't. I've arranged to have him come here. Shine, sir? Not today. Yes, Mark? The district attorney has just gone in. Very well. On your way. I'll keep him here long enough for you to finish the job. In the library. Come in. Hello, Doctor. How are you, Mr. Gardner? It was good of you to come. I realize you're a busy man these days. Have a seat. Thank you. I'm very busy, but I knew you must have a good reason for wanting an interview. Thank you, I have. The National Academy of Science has asked me to prepare the material for biographical articles on the members of the Mayan expedition who have been murdered. I'd appreciate it if you took over these notes to make sure I'm not divulging any information to the criminals that might interfere with your plans to arrest them. They're only a few pages. Perhaps you could look them over now. Certainly. I'd be glad to, Doctor. H1. M3 calling H1. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, we heard it. It's okay. Now get out of there quick. If you gave me the back any minute. Right. Note signed by the scarab. Must to see you at once. Oh, I see. All right, Gail, get a police escort and bring Mr. Henley here. When did he arrive? About ten minutes ago. 
I've been trying to get you, but your line was busy. What? What's that? I said I tried to get you, but your line was busy. All right. I'll expect you in about 15 minutes. Very good. When Henley arrives, we know exactly what they propose to do. Now, Mr. Henley, what is this about an extortion note? They mean business, Gardner. Something's got to be done quickly. Henley, if you value your life, you will obey the following instructions implicitly. Draw $100,000 in currency from your bank and return home with it. Wait there for a telephone message instructing you as to the exact time and place where the money is to be left. It's Karen. How did you receive this? It was pushed under my door. Do you intend to pay this money? Of course I intend to pay. It's my life I'm buying. I consider it worth the price. I'll consent on one condition. You ought to remain on the police guard, and Miss Richards will deliver the money. That's satisfactory. Will you try and capture the extortionists when they come for the money? That won't be necessary. We have a specially constructed carrying case for just such an occasion as this. It has a secret compartment containing a radioactive cell, which keeps sending out a signal. By means of triangulation, we can locate the case wherever it is taken. Perhaps to the headquarters of the scarab himself. I'll take care of the mechanical supply. We'll take every precaution to protect you. But remember, we're probably dealing with a homicidal maniac. You call me at my office as soon as you learn where the money is to be delivered. I will. We'll walk you to the elevator. Now the homicidal maniac will plan a counterattack. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. What is this fairy tale about a carrying case? I never heard of it. Neither did I. It's a good idea. But you told Mr. Henley. I not only told Henley, I also told the scatter. When you said my phone had been busy, I realized someone had been in the apartment. I searched and found a radio dictograph concealed in the bookcase. Then I think... Just what I wanted to think. That we're depending on the phony locator to trace them. So they won't expect us to try any other scheme. So that's it. Yes. And as soon as we learn where to leave the money, I'll start. You go to Henley's, pick up the case, and take it to the location designated.
Take this case and drop it down the shaft at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Get your hands up, Max. and drop it down the shaft at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Get your hands up, Maxon.
I took it right from under Captain America's nose and finished him off at the same time. You should have gone down the shot to make certain. Anyhow, we got the money and outsmarted the district attorney. Perhaps. Ruger's checking now. All right. The money is hot. District attorney tricks Scarab. Extortion money useless. The district attorney's office has just announced that the extortion money delivered by J.C. Henley, wealthy oil man, to the criminal gang headed by the Scarab is useless to them. The serial number on every bill was listed. Banks and business houses have been notified to keep a sharp lookout and phone the police at once should any of the money be presented. A list of the serial numbers will be found on page three. In my last note to Henley, I warned him he would suffer if he failed to obey my instructions. Now I shall demonstrate to him what it means to disobey the scarab. Matson, proceed with that original plan. Yes, sir. How soon can you be ready to strike? By tonight. After the night, Henry will be glad to pay any price I demand, in spite of all the protection he can get from the district attorney. And although your trick to prevent the use of the money was successful, you will soon learn how dangerous it is to disregard the Scarab's orders. Scarab, when did you get this note? It slipped under my door about an hour ago. You know, I was a fool to take your advice. I should have paid the money without any strings and had it all over with. What assurance do you have that the Scarab would have stopped with one demand? Once you start paying extortion money, there's no end to it. But the second note doesn't ask for money, it just threatens me. Oh, I want to help you, but well, I've got to consider my own safety. I've considered that too. And made arrangements to keep you right here in my own apartment under guard. But neither you nor any member of that Mayan expedition can be really safe until the Scarab and his gang are run to Earth. Of course you're right. It's a hopeless task. Not exactly. This was in the pocket of the man found at the mine. Just a card from a used car lot. It isn't much of a clue. No, but it does indicate that the dead man has had some connections with the used car lot. You the manager? Right. I'm Gardner, district attorney. Oh. Sit down. Thank you. What's on your mind? Have you ever seen this man? Why, yes. I sold him a truck the other day. A type. Panel job. I've got the specifications right here. Funny thing about it, too, he had me looking for several days. Had to be just right. Nothing else would do. Here. 18 feet long, five and a half wide, eight high. Double doors in the back with 12 inch window in each. License number? XM7643. Was it in condition to be driven away? No. My tow car delivered it to a garage on the other side of town. Which garage? I don't know. The night man made the delivery. I'll ask him when he comes on tonight. Phone me the address of that garage as soon as you can. I'll be waiting in my office. Sure. So far, the only clue we have is the license number. Now we're free. Hello? Just a moment. It's for you, Chief. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gardner. I have the information you want. It's Martin's Garage on 5th Street. That's right. Martin's Garage. Take it easy with this. This sure looks like one of the real company trucks. Yeah, good job. That's exactly like the one used at Henley's plant. Hurry up. I'm supposed to be on my way to the oil plant now. Hey, what about Barton? He's getting the blueprints. I'll pick him up on the way. Slide that door back, will you? There. Thank you. 
What can I do for you? I'm the district attorney. I'm looking for a large panel truck. Well, we don't sell trucks. We only fix them. You misunderstand me. A large panel truck was towed in here the other day for repairs. The license number is XM7643. Oh, yeah. It needed a new motor, and we didn't have any, so we turned down the job. The owner took it someplace else. You don't know where it was taken, do you? No, I don't. And you didn't do anything at all to it? No, not a thing. You don't mind if I look around, do you? Oh, go ahead. Help yourself. Thanks. Get inside. Phone for some of our men. Check the place carefully. Is the truck in there? No, but they stencil it with the name of Henley's Technigas Oil Company, so they must be planning to attack his plant. I've got to get out there right away. Hey, wait a minute. I've never seen you before. New man? Yeah. I'll have to see your pass.
steam will carry the nitro gas into every building in the plant. As soon as the pressure hits 350 pounds, the gas will ignite and the whole place will blow up. Well, let's get out of here. Open up that master valve. Despite the attempt to blow up the entire Henley Techni Gas Works, only one of the buildings was destroyed, thanks to the timely arrival of Captain America. You should be proud of yourself. Captain America has made a fool of you on every job you attempt. We did our best, but Henley must have disobeyed your orders and squealed to the DA. Yes, Mr. Henley has consistently ignored my warnings. But I'm not beaten yet. This defeat cannot go unchallenged. Or none of the remaining members of the expedition will fear the scarab. What will you do? Eliminate Henley right under the district attorney's nose. Impossible. Henley's kept under close guard in the DA's apartment. There is no chance of even getting near him. We don't have to be near him. Thanks to a weapon devised by the ancient Mayan warriors. You mean the Sangare blowgun? Exactly. Our native Mayan agent, Zula, is an excellent marksman with a blowgun. We will post him where he would have an unobstructed view to the entrance of the district attorney's apartment. Gardner, I've had about enough of this confinement. Your life is still in danger. You're here for your own safety. Oh, hang the safety. I'm neglecting important business. I'll accept full responsibility in case of further trouble, but you must permit me to go to my office. Very well, Mr. Henley. Only I insist that my men accompany you. Thanks. I'll be only too glad to have them. Clancy, you stay here. Yes, sir. Bring your car around in front of the building. You're taking Mr. Henley to his office. I'll follow in my car. What's that thing? A poison dart. 
with your name on it. This should convince you that you're still marked for death. Attempt on life of J.C. Henley in Duster, this foil. DA to investigate origin of ancient poison dart weapon. That smart DA traces the blowgun here to the museum. That's hardly possible. Professor Grayson was the only one who knew I had it in my possession. He died over two years ago. No, Matson. We have nothing to fear from the district attorney. He's on his way in. All right, I'll be ready for him. Get out of sight. Come in. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Mr. Gardner. What brings you here? I have a clue which may lead to the man who made the attack on Mr. Henley's life. Yes, I read about it in the papers. A shocking exhibition of barbarism. Fortunately, Mr. Henley escaped. And he's now safely on his way to a secret destination. We got the man who fired the dart. But this weapon, ever see anything like it? Hmm. A Singari blowgun. Used by the ancient Mayan tribes in primitive warfare. A valuable collector's item, Mr. Gardner. Any idea who might have had such a thing? No, no. The only person who could have helped you was Professor Grayson, an authority on darts and blowguns. Unfortunately, he died several years ago. Yes, I know that. I've already wired Professor Grayson's family, hoping they might know someone who can help me. Well, I hope you're successful, Mr. Gardner. Thank you, Doctor. Good day. Bye. Sign, mister? All right, sir. a long-distance call from Robert Grayson in Northridge. Robert Grayson? The professor's grandson. He's deeply interested in the blowgun attack made on Mr. Henley, and he offered us his help. Young Grayson has made a close study of his grandfather's work. He's sure he can identify the blowgun and probably tell us who owned it. Fine. I'll arrange to have a chartered plane ready at Central Airport tomorrow morning, and you can find the weapon in Northridge yourself. I'll take a rain check on that charge, son. Keep the change. Here's some dope on the DA. He and the girl are going to try and have Grayson's grants and identify the blowgun. She's flying a chartered plane to Northridge from Central Airport tomorrow morning. That puts you in the spot. We're all in a fight. I thought you said that weapon would never be traced here. Grayson's grandson. I hadn't considered his stay in the old man's place. We'd better do something before the blowgun reaches Northridge. We're going to do something before that plane leaves Central Airport. We're from the DA's office to check on that plane we ordered yesterday. It's on the field. You want to see it? Yes. Right this way. Tie him up and put him in there. I'll check with the boss. Right. Calling H1. Calling H1. Z1, calling H1. This is H1. Come in. We're all set. Plane is ready, and the mechanic's taken care of. Good. You'll have plenty of time to install the bomb. I'll have it wired in the plane before the DA gets here.
I'm the district attorney. Is my plane ready? Yes, sir. She's out on the field and ready to go. Fine. As soon as the motor starts, that bomb mechanism starts operating. And uh, when the clock makes ten revolutions, everything will go up. Come on, we gotta look busy. Good luck, Gail. I'll make it all right. Bye. Bye.
It's Captain America. bomb in the plane that just took off. What's the radio wavelength of that plane? 1575 megacycles. Thanks. Calling Gail Richards. Calling Gail Richards. Come in, Gail. This is Gail. Go ahead. There's a time bomb in your plane. Bail out. Bail out. Okay, Grant. Scarab must have feared the blowgun would lead directly to him, or he wouldn't have gone to such extremes to destroy it. He certainly did a thorough job. There wasn't even a fragment of it left in the wreckage. I don't think those two prisoners will help us much. They're just two small-time thugs hired by Madsen for that particular job. I wonder if the Scarab ever heard that the police make plaster of Paris copies of all important pieces of evidence. But we didn't have time to make a replica of that blow gun. I know that, but the Scarab doesn't. We could let the news leak out through the underworld that we have an exact duplicate from which Grayson can identify the owner of the original. And I'm willing to bet it won't be long before the Scarab hears about it. Go ahead, Mark. Number 31 reports the DA has a plaster model of the blowgun. He's wired Grayson to come here to identify the owner. That's all. A model? Why did they make a model of it? Routine procedure, I suppose. This calls for action. We have no time to lose. We must find out where Grayson will go when he arrives. Put every available man on the job. Check reservations on every train, bus, and plane coming into the city. Find out about all reservations in all the hotels. Get started immediately. This is a good reproduction, Walt. Should serve our purpose. But I'd like to see somebody translate those fake Mayan hieroglyphics I painted on it. District Attorney's office. Yes, Commissioner. He's right here. Yes. They fell for it, Grant. A man just asked about Grayson at the Hotel Metropole. And they told him that he reserved room 504 for this afternoon. Fine. That's just what I hope to hear. Have you got a man at the Metropole? Yes. Donovan is taking the doorman's place. All right. Leave him there. But don't have anyone else around. I want them to be able to get away with the blowgun so we can follow them to the scarab. We'd better give them a little time to get organized. Then we'll deliver this right into their hands. Makes it 
tube explode. You press the doorbell, and on the second chime, the wire will burn through, causing the tube to drop and break. The gas spreads rapidly and will knock out anyone in the room in a few seconds. Anything new, gentlemen? Yes. Manson and two others went in a few minutes ago. One of them stayed in the lobby. You look out, I guess, and the others went up to the room. What about that car? Parked around the corner. Drive around and watch that car. If they should leave before I can get back, travel. drove out of the alley and Miss Richard's after him. Here, take my car. Thanks. Calling Gail Richards. Calling Gail Richards. Come in, Grant. Where are you? Going out just in the road. Matson's about a quarter of a mile ahead of me. Don't get too close. I'm following you in Gunnivan's car. Keep me posted. Right. Come in, Gail. He just turned off toward that old barn east of the river. I know the place. Drive past it, then double back and keep an eye on it. I understand. Don't start anything unless you absolutely have to. I'll have this fixed in a minute. I'll hurry it up. Calling 
H1. Calling H1. Come in, M3. Did you get the blowgun? Yes, everything's okay. I'm not so sure. Norton hasn't reported in yet. He hasn't? I'd better go back to the hotel and find out what happened. Norton must have gotten in trouble. I'm going back to look for him. You're staying right here, Matt. Back up. You too. Tie him up. That was quick and easy. As far as he's concerned, yes. But he worked with Captain America, and he's probably on his way here now. We have too much stuff belonging to the museum stored here. And we can't take a chance of letting anyone find it. Spread a powder thing. We'll blow up the whole works and the girl with it.
destruction of the barn spoil all chances of tracing Scarab's men. Oh, Gail? Have you gentlemen seen this? Dr. Clinton Lyman, brother of the late Professor Lyman, who was a victim of the Purple Death, will demonstrate his latest invention at his home tonight. It is said that this device will restore life to plants and animals within certain limits of time. Witnessing the demonstration will be Lyman's fellow members of the Mayan Explorers Club. Why, that's dynamite. Scarab's attacks have been made only on members of that club, and now they're publicizing a meeting like that. Looks like they're asking the Scarab to wipe them out. Get me Dr. Clinton Lyman's home, please. Uh, hello? I never intended that to get into the papers. I simply mentioned it at a private luncheon at my club. I advise you to cancel tonight's demonstration. Oh, no, no, that's impossible. Then you're only inviting disaster for yourself and your associates. No, I don't really think so. If it would relieve your mind, why not attend my demonstration? Thanks, I will. I'll be there with my assistant, Miss Richards. These scientists don't seem to realize their danger from this character. seen this? Yes, I know all about it. I had lunch at the Mayan Explorers Club. And I'm among those invited to Lyman's house. Is there anything to this perpetual life machine? We will find out tonight. Lyman will try and bring a dog back to life. And the Humane Society is cooperating in the experiment. If his device works, I must have it. I've always dreamed of an elixir that will give me power over death itself. But you'll be there yourself. How can you possibly? Oh, it's relatively simple. Dinner shall be over at 8.45. About that time, the truck from the Humane Society should arrive at Lyman's residence. until you're sure the demonstration's a success. Right. Jerk is waiting in his car outside. He'll cover us in case we're trailed. What beautiful roses. This morning, they were withered and dead. And my machine restored them to life. Ma! Can the machine be used to restore human life? I've never tried it. But I'm convinced it will. That must be the men from the Humane Society. Excuse me. Put it here, please. Now, if you'll wait in the ante room. Speaking broadly, gentlemen, the principle of my machine is based on the diathermic method of inducing fever by high temperature. This results in the electronic resuscitation of the circulatory system. It works in conjunction with this serum, which I inject into the vital organs. subject has been dead too long, I cannot expect success.
Gentlemen, I believe the experiment is a success. Wonderful, a miracle. Congratulations, Doctor, on your great contribution to science. Thank you. Here, here, doggy. I'll get him. Hold it, everybody. Oh, what, 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 what is this? Get away from that table. Keep him covered till I get back to help you with Lyman. Get over against that wall. Something's gone wrong. Get away from here. I'll pick up Dirk and we'll take care of Lyman. Sure that no one leaves this house. Right. What is the meaning of all this? I don't lose them. Men broke in, tied us up, and took Dr. Lyman away. Dr. Melder was hurt trying to resist them. Tore the mask off one man. It was Matson. I didn't see the other man's face, but if I ever see him again, I'll know him. He'll be all right. Phone the commissioner to send out some detectives from the identification bureau. They might be able to identify that man I shot and give us a clue to the scarab. Lyman's at a research laboratory, and Hunt got through with the machine safely. We really outfoxed the DA this time. Not entirely. He found a watchman's key on Rick's body, and it won't take him long to trace it. Where did Rick work? He was a night watchman at the Collins gravel pits. We've been using the office there as a meeting place at night. Well, go there immediately and destroy any evidence that might point to me before the district attorney gets there. Or wait. I have a better plan. The one that will remove the evidence and also the district attorney if he goes there. Take the plunger off about 200 yards and be sure you keep the wire out of sight. And pick a spot where we can see the shack clearly. We want to see who goes into it before we blow it up. I'll jump off about 100 yards from the entrance. Keep going, you know what to do. I heard a car pull up outside. It's all right, we're ready. Girl. Yeah. She's the one who works 
past as Captain America. Shall I blow it? No, wait a minute. Captain America might show up, too. He'd never let her come out here alone. You're right. Get your hands up. Up too. He'd never let her come out here alone. You're right. Get your hands up.
it's still alive. We'll have to get him to a doctor right away if we want to save him and find this gal. Bart Matson, who was captured last night by Captain America after a desperate fight, has been positively identified as the criminal who abducted Dr. Lyman and stole his world-famous life-restoring machine. Fatally injured in the battle, Matson is now in the home sanitarium on the verge of death. Attending physicians hope that he may revive sufficiently to speak. If he does, the district attorney is anxious to question him about that master criminal, the Scarlet. Matson won't talk even if he is dying. I know that, but he's our most valuable man. If he dies, we'll have to change all our plans. No, we won't. As a matter of fact, I plan to get his body before it reaches the morgue. But Maxon's dead body can be of no use to us. No. A restore to life it can. I'll make arrangements to recover the body. And when we do, I'll force Dr. Lyman to perform an experiment that will amaze even the district attorney. What's the latest on that? It's getting worse. The doctors have lost all hope of saving his Oh, yes, Commissioner. Dr. Black just phoned me from the sanitarium. Matson is dead. I've ordered the guards removed, and the county morgue will pick up the body. Well, that's unfortunate. Matson's death robs us of the best lead we ever had to the scar. But the search must go on for Dr. Lyman. Put every available man on the job. Okay, Grant. We better go down to the sanitarium and talk to Dr. Black. It's just possible that Matson made some delirious remark, which may help us locate Dr. Lyman. Cut it off. As soon as my men recover Matson's body, it will be brought here. You will resurrect him with your life-restoring machine. But I didn't construct this machine to bring a murderer back to life. And besides, it would take a million volts of electrical energy before this machine would be effective on a man. Well, fortunately, I read your comments on the operation of your machine. And I've been able to supply everything you may require. Come, I'll show you. Hold up the panel. This apparatus, Dr. Lyman, is capable of generating all the electricity you can possibly need. Set the control for one million volts. Throw the generator switch. If you refuse to revive, Matson, your last moments will be spent in there, Dr. Lyman. We'll be ready. You won't have long to wait, Doctor. My men report that the more truck has just arrived at the home sanitarium. They try to claim the body. If they do, I'll have them trail. We'll go to the morgue and make the necessary arrangements. All right, you two. Start walking and don't look back.
County Motor. Look out! Don't step there. Something written on the ground. 1D7744. That must be the license number of the killer's car. This man must have written it before he died. I'll have Davis check on that. GG calling WD. GG calling WD. Come in, GG. The morgue wagon was hijacked. An automobile with the license number 1D7744 may be involved. Have the commissioner send out a general alarm to locate the car, but make no arrests. I'll handle this case myself. I'm on my way back to the office now. Okay, Chief. I just want to verify this number. 1D7744. to the Electronic Research is limited. They've located it in front of the terminal building where that company has its office and shop. Fine. That's all I want to know. Ready for the serum now. seconds, but I hope by that time a Captain America will have captured both of you. His eyelids are fluttering.
job easily get down. Wait in my car in the alley. Pick up the machine and follow him. Only a few seconds, but I hope by that time Captain America will have captured both of you. dead man has been brought back to life. This astonishing news came from the district attorney's office today when it was announced here that Bart Matson, the notorious Garrett henchman who died yesterday, was resurrected by Dr. Lyman's life-restoring machine. While there are no known witnesses to the actual operation, Matson was seen escaping from an electrical laboratory in which the body of Dr. Lyman was found in the midst of the wreckage of his machine. You should be thankful, Matson. 
You're the only authentic case of modern times of a man who has returned from the dead. I owe you a lot for that. Too bad Lyman smashed the machine. Yes, it's unfortunate. However, we've destroyed another enemy. Don't forget that Captain America turned Dirk over to the police. They'll slap a murder charge on him. Oh, I don't think so. The only witness is Captain America, and he can't testify without revealing his identity. If he does that, we should be compensated for the risk we are taking. Dirk might talk and put the screws on. No. I'm taking all precautions. Our lawyer has gone to see him. He'll warn Dirk to keep silent. Hello, Grant. Did you get anything out of Dirk? Not yet, but I will. Dirk will crack up when he's charged with murder. But you can't make a murder charge stick. You haven't any witnesses. All you can prove is that Dirk was present at the time of Dr. Lyman's death. Any smart lawyer will smash your case in no time. But Captain America will. Captain America was unquestionably a witness. But you can't produce him. I probably won't need to. Dr. Lyman was abducted from his home along with his life restoring device. His body was found beside the smashed machine. Now, if I can prove that Dirk was the unknown masked man who helped Maxon with the abduction, I'll convict him of murder. But you can't prove anything. Gail Richards, your assistant, is the only witness who made a positive identification of Dirk as one of the abductors. Our unsupported testimony will not be sufficient in court. I may be able to back up Gail's testimony. There's still one more witness. May I use the phone? Help yourself. Jeffy, Dr. Malder at the Drum Museum. Yes, Carter. Is there something I can do for you? I hope so. We have a prisoner here who we believe is one of Lyman's murderers. Now, we'll have a case against him if you can testify that he was one of Lyman's abductors. But, uh, but he was masked. I only saw the man that Miss Richards called Matson. I understand that. But we'll put a mask on the prisoner, and there may be something, some gesture or some mannerism that you may recognize. At any rate, it's worth a trial. Now, could you arrange to be in my office at 2 o'clock this afternoon? Of course. And I hope you have the right man. What news, Counselor? The district attorney is going to spring a surprise witness to identify Dirk as one of Dr. Lyman's abductors. I know all about that. I've just talked with the district attorney. As a matter of fact, I am to be the surprise witness. You? Excellent. That will knock that case into a cock hat. Or get a habeas corpus? On the contrary. I shall identify Dirk as being one of the abductors. Identify him? Well, you can't do that. Dirk will squeal. If he thinks he's being framed to take a murder rap, he'll tell everything he knows. Exactly. He's become a danger to my organization. I've devised a little plan that will take care of him and the district attorney at the same time. Return to Dirk at once. Tell him he'll be released if he obeys my instructions implicitly. I'll be present when he's brought into the district attorney's office and... Miss Richard says when Matson attacked you, you tore off his mask. That is true. But neither of us saw the face of the other man. The man you're about to see is wearing the same mask you took from Matson. Miss Richards has identified him. We hope you can corroborate her testimony. All right, Davis, bring him in. No, I'm sure this is not the one. Quite right, Doctor. This man is one of my operatives. Bring in the next one, Walt. You understand, Doctor, we've got to be absolutely sure. We don't want your judgment influenced by your friendship for Lyman. Of course. My opinion will be without prejudice, I assure you. This unquestionably is the man who looted Matson in the raid on Lyman's house. That's a lie. You're trying to frame me. Are you willing to identify this man under oath? Positively. That's good enough to convict. Book him for murder. Murder? You can't do that. Suppose I talk. What'll I get? If you'll name the scarab, I'll accept a plea of guilty of second degree murder. Himself. 
Oh, that's preposterous. The man's crazy. Lyman was a soul of honor. He might just as well accuse me of being a scarab. That trick won't work. You can't save your neck by accusing a dead man. It's true. Lyman was using his machine to bring Matson back to life. And why did Matson kill him? How can I tell what a man will do who has just been resurrected from the dead? We'll have to have more evidence than just your word. I can prove it. But I won't talk before this guy, whoever he is. All right. If you'll excuse us, Doctor. And thanks for your help. Glad to get you. Glad. Now talk. What's your evidence? Lyman's papers and a list of all his agents. They're hidden in his house. Lyman's house was thoroughly searched before it was closed up. You didn't know the scarab. There are secret compartments in his house that your cat could never find. Take me there and I'll show you. I think you're lying, but I'll call you a bluff and take you to Lyman's house. See that you don't fail this time. Dirk has served his purpose, but is of no further use to us. He and Gardner must be destroyed. Leave it to me. I'll drop them the minute they come through the door. Not quite so quickly. Before they die, let them know that theirs is the fate of all who attempt to thwart the scarab. D.A. is driving up in front with Dirk. Good. I'll wait in the car. I know the scarab wouldn't let me down. Quiet, you double-crosser. When you threatened to squeal, you signed your own death warrant. As for you, Mr. D.A., you're finally going to pay the penalty for interfering with the scarab.
smashed and the Scarab's agents escaped. Uh, G.F. Hillman, the railroad president's on the phone, Chief. He's calling by a radio phone from his private car on the Westland Limited. Hillman? Wasn't he one of the principal backers of the Mayan expedition? That's right. I'll take the call here. I've made a remarkable discovery. A clay tablet which I received from the last Mayan expedition was dropped and broken yesterday and exposed a copper plaque etched in Mayan symbols. It's a portion of a map showing the location of the fabulous Temple of Emeralds in the lost city of Zada. That's a dangerous discovery, Mr. Hillman. The scarab will stop at nothing to obtain that map. That's why I'm calling you. A duplicate stone tablet, undoubtedly containing the missing portion of this map, was given to Dr. Maldor, curator of the Drummond Museum. You both must be protected. Not a word about this to anyone. I'll arrange reservations for you at a quiet hotel. Plain clothesmen will meet you at the depot and escort you there. Meanwhile, I'll contact Dr. Malder and warn him. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. I'll take the necessary precautions. Goodbye. The yeah, air? What's he want to know? You already know this too much. Bring the bronze box from the display case of the mail exhibit. I've been a fool. The key to the secret wealth of Zada. A half of a map to locate the temple has been lying here in the museum under my nose. Half of a map? Has it been torn? No. It was etched on a copper plate and must have been broken in two parts for better concealment. Hillman discovered one of them and is taking it to the district attorney. 
Meanwhile, I'll have the police search the museum for additional clues. Fine. And you'll tell Hillman what happened? Yes, I'll phone him right away. Now, if you'll excuse me, Doctor. Bye, sir. Certainly. Goodbye. Have you forgotten we're dining with Mr. Hillman? I'll be with you in a minute. all confidential files brought to him immediately. I'll have to go back to the office and pick them up. But what about our dinner engagement? You go ahead. I'll try to join you later.
certainly. Now, Mr. Gardner wants you. Thank you. Clancy speaking. One of the Scarab's men just broke into my office. I don't know what he was after, but it probably means they're trying desperately to find Hillman. So be especially careful. I'm coming right over. Mr. Gardner can't arrive too soon to take the accursed thing off my hands. That's probably the waiter. Better play safe and hide that thing. Sorry, bud. Just a formality. Go in. What's the meaning of this? One peep out of any of you, and it'll be your last. Get over here. Turn around. the other half of the treasure map. You may tell the scattered. I'll not aid his murderous plans, even at the risk of my life. Not only your life, but the thing. Take care of those two. Wait. It's in the wall safe. Get it. any tricks, let him have it. This looks like the real thing, all right. Now, we're taking you to a nice, quiet place where you can decipher both pieces of this map for us. We'll go out the surface entrance. Take a look in the corridor and see if it's clear.
Watch him. If he tries any trick, let him have it. This looks like the real thing, all right. Now, we're taking you to a nice, quiet place where you can decipher both pieces of this map for us. We'll go out the surface entrance. Take a look in the corridor and see if it's clear. Maybe a lie. We'd better clear out before he raises an alarm. We've got to take Hillman with us. He's the only one that can decipher the plaques. to stop us, you'll be the first to get it. Us, but we lost him. Hmm. So Hillman is resting comfortably at the farm. Hmm? He'll be in shape to talk by morning. I wonder how Captain America found out we were at Hillman's hotel. I think I know. One of my agents reported that the man we sent to the district attorney's office for the electro recorder was killed. His body is in the morgue. Then the DA must have the electro recorder with your voice on it. The sound was recorded on a magnetic wire. When it was played back, all sound was eradicated. There was no identifying mark of a mechanism. We have nothing to worry about from the district attorney. The man I found here must have thrown this out the window. I picked it up in the street below. It seems to be a recording device of some kind. Yes. And it may have been planted in this office. Check it over thoroughly, Walter. All right, Chief. Give you full report in the morning. Fine. Let's hope we get a lead to the scarab. And the scarab is with him. Dr. Maldor, so you are the scarab. Yes, I am the scarab. The murderer of Lyman and Dodge and... I didn't come to discuss that. Let's get down to business, Hillman. I must learn the location of the Lost Temple of Emeralds. 
You will suffer the same fate as your associates unless you decipher these plaques for me. I won't do it. You'll never get your criminal hands of that fabulous wealth. You're very headstrong. But there are ways of making you talk. Tie him up to that chandelier. There'll be plenty of time to get the information I want. There'll be no interruption from Captain America or the district attorney now. What'd you find out? Well, there were no identifying marks on the parts, but I found a fingerprint on one of the magnetic coils. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. Definitely. I identified the fingerprint as that of Ed Graham. He runs a radio repair shop at 32 South Street. Here's his record. Arrested three times on suspicion of robbery and receiving stolen goods. Dismissed each time for lack of evidence. Well, this time we really have some evidence. I hope it helps us find Hillman. We'll soon find out. I'll force Graham's hand before he learns we have his fingerprint to convict him. Get in touch with the chief operator at the telephone company. Have a cut into the line to Graham's radio shop. Hello? Just a minute. I'll talk. Cut him down. Graham's on the phone. Yes, Graham, what is it? The district attorney dropped in with that electro recorder. He couldn't figure it out. I told him I'd never seen anything like it. Was he suspicious? I don't think so. He just seemed to be checking around the radio shops. All right. Let me know if you find out anything else. fractured his skull. Your stupidity will delay my learning the secrets of those blacks. Stretch him out the couch, boys. Get my hat and coat. We're going back to town. Yes, officer. Thank you. Grant Gardner. Calling Grant Gardner. Yes, Gail, come in. The chief operator reports that Graham just made a phone call to the old Watson farm off Riverside Lane. Was Hillman's name mentioned? No. He only talked about your checking on that recording device. Fine. I'll reopen negotiations with Mr. Graham. Manufacturing that recorder. Your fingerprint was found on the coil. All right, I made it. I sold it to a stranger. Yes. A stranger you just called at the Watson farm. How'd you find out? Never mind that. You better talk and talk fast. Is Hillman at that farm? Get around behind here. In the back room. Hello. 
hold you for a while. I'm going to investigate that farm. H1, calling H1, this is Graham, calling H1. Come in, Graham, this is Gruber. The DA's got me tied up in my shop. He's on his way to the Watson farm. Warn the scarab. I'll phone the farm. Then I'll send someone down to release you. got the goods on Graham. He's on his way to the farm right now. Try to phone him there, but no one answers. Shall I try again? It's no use. The phone's out of order. There's no way to warn them. Can you beat the DA to the farm? No, it's impossible. Call my pilot. Tell him to have the plane ready to take off. Instruct him to load the bomb rack. Human knows that I'm a scarab. He's never lived to talk. You've got to fly there and bomb the house. Yes, sir. I'd better phone headquarters. We're coming to the house now. News are down.
G.F. Gilman, wealthy railroad president, was rescued today by Captain America from the Scarab's agents who bombed a farmhouse where he was being held prisoner. Suffering from a brain injury, he was rushed to a hospital, the name of which the district attorney refuses to divulge, saying it will be kept a secret to protect Hillman. If Hillman does regain consciousness, you'll tell them that you are the Scarab. He must be killed before he can talk. How? Only the DA and Captain America know where he is. It is obvious that the district attorney and Captain America are the same man. When Graham phoned from the radio shop, he said that the district attorney was on his way to the Watson farm. Yet Captain America was the one who reached there. That doesn't locate Hillman for us. Gail Richards will. How is he? In bad shape. I wired for a famous brain surgeon. He was just starting north on a hunting trip when his office caught him. He's driving back and should be here by 5 o'clock. Here's their reply. He said he's coming here to the office. Yes. I couldn't take a chance to let anyone know which hospital Hillman is in. When the doctor arrives, I'll drive him there. In the meantime, you go to the hospital, stay right beside Hillman. In the event that he regains consciousness, try and get a statement, even for a moment. Understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Where to? The Drummond Museum. It's good to see you, Miss Richards. Be seated. Dr. Mallard, why was I brought here? Perhaps this will explain. It explains a lot. You're the scarab. Yes. It's your misfortune that I had to let you know. But I need some information. Sit down. Tell me, where are they keeping Hilda? If I knew, I wouldn't tell you. Fortunately, only the district attorney knows. I had thought you would say that. But I have a means of making you tell me the truth. contains an extract grew from a jungle flower, which is a very efficient truth serum. Under its influence, you will tell me anything I want to know. Unfortunately for you, the effects never wear off, and you will spend the rest of your life in an insane asylum, a hopeless idiot. And now, Miss Richards. Go ahead, Miss Richards, and I warn you to tell the truth. I don't know which hospital Mr. Hillman is in, but the district attorney has wired for a brain surgeon. We're driving here in his car. He will arrive at the office at 5 o'clock. From there, he's to be taken to the hospital. What is the surgeon's name? Dr. Rodlin Barrick. Spell it. R-O-D-L-A-M. B-A-R-A-C-S. Contact Agent 33. Tell him to use his name and to go to the district attorney's office. Mr. Gardner, I'm Dr. Rodlin Barracks. How do you do, Doctor? Would you have a chair? Thank you. You arrived earlier than I expected. I know. I received your wire about Hillman, and instead of driving all the way, I managed to charter a plane. That was very thoughtful of you. In a case like this, time is important. Has Hillman regained consciousness? Sorry, no. That's alarming. I'll have to make an examination at once. Uh, which hospital is he in? The Crestview. I would not have him. Uh, my associate's waiting for my call. Uh, may I use your phone? Certainly. I'll dial it for you. What's the number? Oh, uh, two six. Four, three. Hello? Uh, get my surgical kit and meet me at the Crestview Hospital on Woodlawn Avenue. 
Understand? Got it. I'll take care of everything. The men are waiting downstairs. One will meet you in the lobby of the hospital in case of trouble. The other will wait in the getaway car. I'll be here when you get back. Very well. I'll start at once. I'm sorry I can't go with you, Doctor, but I have some work to do. Please phone me in your report as soon as possible. Of course, Mr. Gardner. Thank you. man's an imposter. Only Gail and I knew I'm expecting a brain surgeon, and the man I wired for is Dr. George Thomas. Then Gail is in trouble. Exactly. But there's a chance to find her. I gave him the name of the wrong hospital. I want you to phone the commissioner, ask him to send a raiding party to the Crestview Hospital, and pick up Dr. Rodman Barracks and whoever's with him. Meanwhile, I'm going to trace that phone call he made. This is the district attorney. I want the address of Oak 2643. Who's there? The district attorney. Open up. Miss Richards. How would I know? You know, all right. And about that phony surgeon, Rodham Barracks, too. Phony? Well, the girl told us that... She gave you the wrong name. She made this one up to warn me. And at the same time, to tell me that Malder is a scarab. Malder? You're crazy. Hey, how could she do that? Rodham Barracks is Malder scarab spelled backward. See? S-C-A-R-A-B, M-A-L-D-O-R. Malder is the scarab. When Malder finds out she double-crossed him, he'll kill her. She'll have a horrible death. Well, you know what, he'll... Shut up. He won't find it out in time. Yes? The whole thing was a trap. The cops were waiting at the hospital. Got the others. I just managed to escape. Hold the car there for a fast getaway. We'll be out as soon as we dispose of the girl. So you lied to me. No one can do that and live. This looks a thousand years old. But it isn't. A week ago, he was a living, breathing man. But he disobeyed my orders. He was placed in this case. In a short time, he became the withered mummy that you see before you. And you'll be just like that in a few minutes. Gruber. get our valuables together while you connect the mummifying gas. I'm afraid the district attorney will hardly recognize Miss Richards when he finds her a withered mummy. sooner than I expected, Mr. District Attorney. Where's Gail Richards? Well, you'll never find her unless... unless you're willing to exchange her life for my freedom. The scarab will have the pleasure of turning on the gas. Himself. Better make a deal, Captain America. In a few minutes, it will be too late to save Miss Richards. Then she's in the building. Tell me where she is.
thanks to Captain America, whom we now know to be our fighting district attorney, the Scarab and his murderous gang pay the supreme penalty in the electric chair at a stroke of midnight tonight. To review the Scarab's crimes... No need to review them now. These convictions definitely prove that crime doesn't pay. I want to say that the people of this city owe a great deal to you, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, Captain America. Thank you. But we owe a great deal more to Gail. Her cleverness took me off to the Scarab's identity. But Captain America arrived in time to capture the Scarab. It's midnight. Toll of doom for the scallop. Uh -huh. 